This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtes current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking back at changes that happened to the Harrier in open beta on the 16th of June 2021. We've been busy for the last week and a half on the hind, so we're a bit behind. These are the things that they've changed that I think is important for everyone to know. One, they added time to target and time on target CS-T functionality for TACAN steering. The Tumi airfield is off to the forward port side. It is 16 X-ray TACAN, so TACAN on 16 is already typed in for some reason, which is fine. X-ray transmit receive. Okay, that's already hooked up, which is great. Over to our EHSD. We're going to box TACAN steering. Ping. We've now got TACAN steering on hard, and if I unpause, we can see that we've got 16.6 miles to the Takan station and on our heading tape, we are now aligned with Takan, all normal stuff. I'm just gonna pause it there so I've got plenty of time. And next, we're gonna go to the timer function TMR on the UFC. I'm gonna go to TOT here and I'm gonna say that I want to be over that uh, Takan station at, I don't know, four minutes past seven. Bearing in mind that is the actual time now. So zero seven, zero four, zero zero, enter. CS-T is telling me that I need to do that speed there to achieve that time. So let me go and unpause. I need to speed up. I need to slow down. And that is on speed there. Just gonna pause. So a quick reminder, it's saying that I need to maintain 345 knots to ensure that we reach that tack end station at 0704. Zero, zero. Two, they've added the HPI to the USS Tarawa. Hover position indicator light on the Tarawa. So if we zoom on the back, we can see it's these guys here. Now they are static, they don't move. They include green light, green light, green light, green light, white light, white light, amber light, amber light, red light. Know how the red light is offset front calibrated with these bars here. What we do is maneuver into our landing and depending where the red light shows in relation to these other lights here is going to tell us our position. So if I bring up this graphic here, you can see at the top left, if the red light is up and left, our hover position is too far aft. If the red light is superimposed over to the right, but otherwise level, the hover position is too far forward of touchdown zone. 50 feet eye to the deck. 50 feet eye to the deck is what we're trying to achieve, by the way. If the red light is over the rightmost green light, then we are over the touchdown zone, but 50 feet over. That is our final position before we descend. And if the red light is over or above the top white light, then we've descended and landed at that point. So I hope that makes sense. And my eternal apologies. Possibly the worst Harrier driver in the world, but I'm going to do my best. She's trying to tell me something. I don't know what it is, but... It's a joke, by the way. And the slightly awkward thing is that it's quite hard to see on the screen because, you know, you, the screen's just not as good as the human eye. So you have to keep zooming in like that. What you do with VR, I don't know. God knows. Now, the thing is, I'm used to just focusing on my HUD doing this. I'm not used to looking out the right of the cockpit. And to be honest, it's a bit beyond me. But we're going to battle through like we always do. There you go, look what it is. I'm almost in position. Do you see that? What I'm trying to do is get the red light now on the on the red on the right green light. That means I'm in landing position 50 feet up. Ah, got it. Almost got it. So that there would mean that I'm over the hover well, near enough over the hover position but 50 feet up. Uh, if you're a proper Harrier, Harrier pilot, you would do this properly. Obviously, I can't. And now I'm going to try unpausing and slamming it to the deck. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now. <laughs> that means I've landed, I think. And when I'm landed, I'm slightly out of position because that light should be directly above there. That's the best that my terrible skills allows me to do. But you get the idea now of how we can use this to judge our position to get the forward and aft right, then get the red light over the green light there to say that we're in position to land but 50 feet up, and then get the red light there to say that we are in our landing spots. The best I can do, sorry. Three added, this is an interesting one, designating a target will automatically designate the EHSD des 
G function. I try to be positive about these things, but this is very difficult for me to be positive about. So, what we had, in fact, let me just show you. There's a target in front of us, okay? Let's go and find that target. Air to ground, master arm, stores page, select a bomb. You all know this back to front by now. Fuse the bomb with the proper fusing. There we go. Uh, now we've got sensor, select, switch, depress, double tap to get the teapot activated and uh, have it uh, movable. So we're now going to press our TDC up, down, left and right to move the teapot about. Find a target, it doesn't matter what. That bridge there, that's a perfectly good target. We're then going to lock the target, as you know, by pressing TDC uh, action depress, ping. We've now got a target. We know we've got a target because we have the target diamond. We've also got 4.2 miles to target. Look what we've also got. The azimuth steering line. All the symbology we need to go and drop a bomb. Now, let me tell you why this is a big deal. Why I'm angry about it and whatnot. So this is how it used to work in its first couple of years. Then they changed it so that when we select that target, from the T-Bot in this case, it could be a different way, it did not transfer that information through to that ESHD therefore we did not get this bombing syndrology and what you had to do back then was you had to go well maybe we'll do it here we had to go into the ESHD uh, we had to press and hold a waypoint increment for a second or two seconds I can't remember that would transfer the information through to the ESHD then we would get the symbology they did that because that's apparently how the real Harrier worked They've now gone back on themselves and gone back to how it was before. So we no longer have to do the e e EHSD and we no longer have to do the waypoint increment. That annoys me because I've changed all of my videos over to show the waypoint increment version and there is no way in heck am I doing that for them again to go and change it all back to this. So sorry but that's just how it is. If you're watching this video, great. If you're not, tough. Basically you no longer have to do the EHSD stuff again you just lock the target and the information is going to come directly through from the auto anything to add rc help four added course line from waypoint is transferred to target when using long waypoint increment button press so you can create a course line and that course line can be attached to a thing a navigation point if you remember you press and hold this course here left click or right click you can see the line and the ehsd there you can also type in the, uh, the, the the direction, the bearing, if you like, for the course line in the UFC, if you like. Currently, it is attached to the target. If it were attached to something else, like that TACAN point there, or another element, apparently you can press and hold waypoint increment for a second or a couple of seconds, let go, and it will then attach itself to the target. I haven't actually found a way of showing that working in here because I'm just not good enough on the Harrier, but we think that's what it means. Five, an improvement. The velocity vector is occluded when it is inside the gun sight pipper. And this is really hard to do, but let's see if we can get it done. On, 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 on. Gun. Bup, bup, bup. Uh, right, let's try and get some altitude. Maybe you guys are going to have more luck than me, but I'm going to try and get my velocity vector onto my gun pipper and stop it just when that happens. <laughs> Stop! Haha, <laughs> I got it. So my velocity vector, which is the little circle with the wings and the tail on it, once it goes through or behind the gun pipper, it gets occluded, and once it comes out the other side, there it is, it's come out there, there it's back. Six, improvement. This promises to be useful. TOO saves designated target if it exists. What that says to us is that if you designate a target, you can save that information through to the T1 to T10 target memory slots for use with, say, JDAMs later. I haven't managed to get it to work, neither has RC, and our expert Harrier pilot, T Cipher, is on holiday at the moment. I can't reach him, so sorry, I can't cover that one, but I'll ask him to cover it when he gets back. Finally, as of now, the Lightning T-Pod cannot fire or arm the laser if the following conditions are not met. The landing gear has to be up, the airspeed has to be below 100, the master arm must be to arm, the master mode must be air to ground, the T-Pod super wide field of view mode must be off, and the T-Pod must be in either area or point locked or be slewed to a system designation. If you don't have all of those things, the laser will not fire. Note there is a few minor problems with this system at the moment. Raspam said they will be fixed in the next patch. That's all I've got for the moment. Sorry I couldn't be more thorough. I hope that was useful and see you later.